Hello, this is part of the third module of the Working with DNA lessons. This module is about using restriction enzymes and gel electrophoresis. This is the second presentation in module three. Ideally, if you're here, you've already been through presentation A and you are working through booklet three. The learning intention of this presentation is to analyze and interpret evidence about DNA to draw conclusions about the success of making recombinant DNA. By the end of the presentation, you should be able to describe the purpose of gel electrophoresis, apply understanding of restriction enzymes and gel electrophoresis to the analysis of plasmid DNA, and you should be able to interpret DNA profiles from gel electrophoresis. In gel electrophoresis, mixtures of molecules are separated by size. To do this, samples are loaded into a gel, which is essentially just a rectangular prism-shaped jelly. For separating DNA, the gel is made of a substance called agarose. As you can see in the photo on the left, electricity is applied to the gel. DNA, which is negatively charged due to the phosphate sugar backbone, will move through the gel from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. However, the pieces of DNA will not move at the same speed. Larger pieces of DNA will move much slower, so will remain close to the top of the gel. Smaller fragments of DNA will move faster and end up nearer the bottom of the gel. In the diagram on the right, you can see that seven different samples have been loaded onto the gel. The first sample in the first lane here is a standard. It's called a DNA ladder. It acts also as a bit kind of positive control. It contains DNA fragments of known sizes to which you can compare your other samples. The sizes are written on the left and are expressed in base pairs. After a recombinant plasmid is made, we need to always check that the gene of interest was inserted correctly. To do this, the plasmid needs to be cut with appropriate restriction enzymes. On the left, we have a diagram of an example plasmid. On the right is a diagram of the DNA fragments that result when this plasmid is cut. The plasmid has to be cut to run nicely through the gel. If it's still in a circular shape, it won't run at the same speed as our DNA ladder. Can you use the evidence in the gel diagram on the right to draw a conclusion about which sample was cut with ECOR1 enzyme and which sample was cut with the HIND3 enzyme? Now, if we look at the gel, sample A has been cut once, creating a linear piece of DNA that is 4070 base pairs long. Therefore, it was cut with HIND3. Sample B has been cut twice, here and here. resulting in two fragments, one that is 1,200 base pairs long, and the other one is 2,870 base pairs long. Note that DNA fragment length is not the only variable in the DNA fragments. Mass of DNA can also vary. In lane one on the gel diagram here, which is a D standard DNA ladder, you can see that the three kilobase pair fragment of DNA appears brighter than some of the others.
This means that there is more of it. It has greater mass compared to some of the other sized fragments. In a moment, you should refer to section B of booklet three to practice interpreting this gel electrophoresis diagram. Before you do that, let's have a closer look at the diagram. On the left is the plasmid, which is 4,100 base pairs long. On the right is a diagram of the gel after DNA fragments have been separated using gel electrophoresis. Lane two contains the uncut plasmid. Because a plasmid is circular, it does not move at a speed that is consistent with linear pieces of DNA. In fact, we appear to have a few different sizes. This is because some of the plasmid is supercoiled like a twisted rubber band. This form of plasmid will travel somewhat faster than some other forms of DNA. Other forms of plasmid DNA might also be present. These forms might be slightly denatured due to the effects of the DNA extraction process. Please pause and work on part B of booklet three. Part C of the booklet gives you the chance to make predictions about the possible results that you might get when working with the PGLO plasmid at SparkEd. Have a go with this section by yourself and let us know if you have any questions. Good luck. Congratulations on getting through the working with DNA modules. Again, if you have any questions, please email us at SparkEd.